Hey guys, and welcome back for another HFC Patreon TV Com. Today, we're going to be watching Episode 1 of Lupin the Third, Part 4, The Italian Adventure. Episode 1 being The Wedding of Lupin the Third. Obviously, Lupin the Third, long-running anime series manga as well. Uh, TMS Entertainment, apparently. Uh, the series is written by Monkey Punch. I'm just pulling facts out of my ass, taken directly from the Wikipedia here. But uh, this was commissioned by POTK. And uh, I once again have Volk with me. We're kind of recording the TV comms in a batch here. So, uh, yeah, everything you guys will need to sync our commentary can uh, be found in the video description, instruction-wise. And we're going to get right on into it in three, two, one. I kind of have a, a bit of cursory knowledge about Lupin the Third. I know he's like a, a bit of a, a rapscallion criminal and whatnot, but uh, I remember specifically, we're watching the sub version, by the way, that uh, I was in hospital to have my tonsils out about ooh, 15 or so years ago, and um, we had like these prepaid like uh, TVs on a stick that are over your bed. And um, I had Toonami, so they had Ultimate Muscle, and they had the dub of what I would assume was the original loop in the third, so that's how I was able to watch a little bit of it. Hey, hey. I didn't actually end up watching it on Toonami in the end, but my experience with Lupin the Third came from what I widely consider to be one of the best animated movies out there, which is The Castle of Cagliostro. Which is Lupin, but was actually made by Miyazaki, who is, the, of course, the dude who is behind Studio Ghibli nowadays. Huh? So that's pretty much my experience with it. I kind of read up a little bit more of it like over the course of time, because I actually had a genuine interest thanks to the castle of Cagliostro. Unfortunately, I wasn't ever able to get a hold of or find the actual series. Um, usually back in those days, my anime watching mostly came from whatever was on um, the sci-fi channel at the time. Ah. So um, whilst I didn't get my loop in the thirds, I did get like my Neon Genesis Evangelions, my Martian Success in the Descos, uh, Bubblegum Crash, and uh, of course stuff like Outlaw Star, Cowboy Bebop, etc. A little bit of knowledge about uh, Arsene Lupin the Third. Acknowledged across the globe as the world's number one thief, Lupin is a master of disguise and deduction, marksman, prime mover, mission engineer, and inventor of numerous handy gadgets. His fun-loving, foolhardy incongruity covers a brilliant mind, always extemporizing and reevaluating. As such, he has been responsible for heists no right-minded individual would ever believe possible. And he is actually French-Japanese. Oh, there you go. I am loving this intro, by the way. It's great. This theme song is, like, so iconic. Like I said, cursory knowledge, but uh, I know this tune when I hear it. Hell yeah, let's do it. I do like uh, the more Mon take on the animation and whatnot. It's very clearly, um, you know, the original style, but it's just a lot more fluid. The original run of uh, Loop in the Third Part 4 uh, was on... Um, August 30th, 2015 to November 30th, 2015. That was in Italy, but in Japan it was October 1st, 2015 to March 17, 2016. Huh. So was this dubbed first in Italy? Quite possibly. I mean, if it's based around Italy, it would make sense. Oh, Inspector Zenagata, always gotta come crashing the party. Didn't think the wedding and the wedding of Lupin the Third would go as smoothly as all that, so uh, I kind of like how the backgrounds almost seem like photographs and like you have the um the characters transposed on top of it hmm <laughs> he means business <laughs> it's just like no i will stop the wedding you will not arrest my wife who looks like she came right out of fucking Gurren Lagann. you know what i was just about to say that <laughs> yeah, i guess you're just more on the ball with these uh quick references than i am There you go. All right, a bit of voice actor trivia here. Let's scroll down. Uh, Lupin is uh, portrayed here in Japanese by Kanichi Kurita and in English by Tony Oliver. Hmm. What did Tony Oliver do? Because I don't think I've actually heard that name before. He helped produce the live-action shows Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and VR Troopers. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm just uh, scrolling down here to see if... Uh, there's anything uh, I would recognise. He was in Tenshi Moyo as uh, Misao Kuramitsu. Uh, he was in Bleach as All Kirio Cipher. Uh, Gurren Lagan, funnily enough, as uh, Tetsukan and the narrator. Uh, he was in JoJo's Bizarre Adventures, Bruford. Ooh, okay. 
So he's been around a little bit then. More voice acting trivia. Uh, Daisuke Jigen, uh, Kiyoshi Kobayashi in Japanese, Richard Epcar in English. I know Richard Epcar. I actually met him at a convention. Very cool guy. Uh-huh. And uh, Inspector Koichi Zanigata, Koichi Yamadera in Japanese, Doug Erholz in uh, English. Uh, he voiced uh, Squall Leonhardt in the uh, Dissidia games and also Leon, I guess, in the Kingdom Hearts games. Uh-huh. I uh, have a bit of knowledge about the uh, to-do of, like, Italian or French upper classes, because I've watched Porco Rosso, another Ghibli thing. Oh, yes, I haven't actually seen that one, so uh, that might be something I have to uh, cross off a list at some point. Well, dude, you know Richie and I covered all the Ghibli films except Castle of Cagliostro. Yes, I do. I'll probably have that on in the background when I do eventually go to watch (laughs) it, don't you worry. I haven't forgotten. Thank you. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Fujiko is what you could possibly consider an old flame of uh, Lupin's. Oh. I, gotta, I love the animation. I know that's just kind of reaching for commentary, but there's just something about it that I find very appealing. I'm glad they're doing it now, and like a lot more animes recently are sort of going for this more simplified kind of yeah. drawn anime style, so that most of the uh, meat of it can be shown in motion instead. Exactly. Like Pokemon Sun and Moon did it, a lot of people were hesitant about it at first, but that quickly got washed away once they actually saw it all in motion. It's great, uh, yeah. Dragon Ball's going to be doing it for their next movie coming up as well. Looks fantastic, mate. Mm, he really does. I'm looking forward to it. We might actually do a movie commentary of that. I don't know. Ooh. Uh, who was that character who uh, was the old flame? Uh, that is uh, Fujiko, who is the uh, Burnett bombshell. All right. Uh, Miyuki Sawashiro in Japanese. Michelle Ruff in English. That name rings a bell, so I'm just going to bring up her uh, thing here. She was Chi in Chobits. Uh, Rukia Kuchihiki in Bleach. Um, in some of the Resident Evil games, she voices Jill Valentine. She, oh, she's Cream the Rabbit in the Sonic games. Aha! Yes. Well, that said, she has homies all over the world. Oh, very connected. But yeah, I absolutely agree about the more simplistic art style. I was going to say, it seems a little bit muted, which helps it pop against the backgrounds more. It's almost like it was taken directly out of a uh, manga, like a coloured manga or a comic book or something. I can only move in diagonals. <laughs> so obviously I haven't been following Lupin the Third. Is this a recurring character? Um, not her, I believe. I believe she is unique to this particular uh, series. Okay. Although I don't have as much experience with the actual series to say for certain, but as far as I'm aware, she hasn't recurred. All right, Rebecca Rossellini. Uh. Yukio Fuji in uh, Japanese, Cassandra Lee Morris in English. Cassandra Lee Morris, that one rings a bell too. Let's see, uh, Yu Bell in Yu Gi Oh GX. Yes, that's the one. What else we got here? Lin Lee Ku in Zelda Blade Chronicles X, Morgana in Persona 5. Ooh, okay, I have actually played and experienced all three of those games, so yeah, I feel like I should have known that one from the off chance, but yeah, it definitely sounds familiar now. All right, it's time for a bit of Austin Powers stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah, baby! (laughs) No. (laughs) Oh, God. I want a butler to, like, cock-block me from out of the shadows. Wait a minute, what the fuck am I saying? (laughs) Yeah, that doesn't sound like something I'd want. I don't know. Just be cool to kind of happen once in your life. Cross it off the bucket list. (laughs) I suppose so. Well, I suppose it wouldn't do to oversleep on uh, what I would assume is the morning of a heist. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen the uh, Inspector have it quite this rough in a uh, Lupin-related thing. Well, you know, he's, you know, puffing his chest out and trying to throw his weight about in another country where his jurisdiction, jurisdiction rather, doesn't lie speak correctly, Tom. People are paying for this. I uh, know, he was a lot more um, gentlemanly in the uh, Castle of Cagliostro. Ah. He was dealing with foreign affairs there. He was a lot more um, amicable, I guess is the right word. <laughs> I like the goofy face on the back of the card, though. Uh, Lupin 
is the sort of guy, I believe, who comes up with the majority of the gadgets which um, himself, Jigen, and uh, Goimon end up using in their various escapades. Uh, Jigen's more of the uh, guns and weapons buff. He's usually the guy who has like all the guns, all the ammo, and knows how to use them. Yeah. And uh, Goimon, or Gomon, I'm not sure which one it actually is. I've heard both ways. And he's just the guy who just likes to slice people up with his sword. Oh, I'm so glad this is set in Italy. What a gorgeous location. <laughs> you know, David Production, you could give us a bit of an update when fucking Part 5 of Jojo is coming out. <laughs> you are really, really chomping at the bit for that. I'm, well, first of all, it's champing at the bit, get it right. Secondly, yes, I am, because I love Jojo, what can I say? We all love ourselves a bit of Jojo here, I think. I don't think there's anybody really in HFC who doesn't like a little bit of Jojo. It all started with THD. He was the cancer that infected us all. <laughs> Actually, I did end up watching Stardust Crusaders back when it was sort of first making the rounds. Ah. Um, it showed up a couple of times on Sci-Fi, and I just happened to catch a few. Although it was the later episodes, eventually I found the others after the fact. But it was like the one where you sort of like had um, them pretty much in Egypt. They have to fight with Vanilla Ice, and then they have to fight with Dio. God, that's... that. Like, description was just impenetrable to people who don't know what JoJo's about. It's like why reading JoJo's spoilers doesn't matter, because you want to see what the context is. But anyway, we're supposed to be here to talk about Lupin and his hairy palms. Yeah, they really went above with the uh, body hair details on this one, I notice. I appreciate that. I mean, it's not really something you, that gets much um, notice with these sort of things. <laughs> I do like those little uh, midpoint transitions as well. Very cutesy. I bet this would be really interesting to watch in Italian, actually. It kind of reminds me a bit of Tintin in that regard. Yeah, you raise a good point there, although... Hmm. Yeah, I reckon that would work out. I was just thinking maybe, like... Having it all in, like, the native languages and what have you would make sense. I mean, it worked for Helsing, where they actually got, like, proper British voice actors in and all that for the various roles. I don't know. I'm just saying. Gives it a bit of extra flavour. Yeah, that's why you shouldn't, uh, give away your location, because now he's coming for you. Oh, but he's been through this song and dance many times before. I think he just does it to toy with him. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I think Rebecca might be the one who's trying to get the crown jewels in this framing Lupin. Yeah, that would make sense. I was going to say, it could have just like disappeared from under their noses that easily. Yeah, I mean, they weren't even anywhere near it. And, like, I didn't see a gadget or anything like that. Like, see, this right here, the fluid, lively animation, is the benefit of having more simpler designs. Absolutely. Especially when you can get sort of like get the details of like all the tiles being kicked up whilst they're running across the roof and what have you. Uh huh. Go on, bitch. <laughs> oh, I love this guy. Didn't they just like put a price on their heads? I'm pretty sure you're not meant to physically attack the cops. Well, technically, he didn't really attack them. The tree just so happened to fall on top of him. I see. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna marry her. Let's see how she likes that. Dun dun! It was Fujiko this whole time. So wait, was it Fujiko or Rebecca who was being uh, manipulative? Well, at the moment it seems to be that uh, Fujiko was plotting to steal it and was trying to frame Lupin. Right. But um, things could change. They could uh, lead us on with a triple twist here. Look at this Inspector Gadget bullshit. Well, he is the gadget buff of the group, so not surprising. It's just our look that we got, like, a series of all, well, most of my favourite tropes in the action series. We've got a chase, we've got some good banter, nice detailed action. Well, that's what I love about Castle of Cagliostro, because it's all that and then some packed into a movie. It's great. Oh, God, I have to put that on the Patreon poll, alongside, like, the girl who let through time and so on. 
And don't forget, uh, we've dropped uh, voting in polls down to a single dollar, the lowest tier price. So, uh, <sighs> Fujiko, seriously? Vote in polls, that's what I'm saying. Uh, here we go, the hostage situation, Lupin just can't help himself. I mean, she's a jewel, but this crown has multiple jewels, so... So is it Lupin or Lupin? I've heard both. Lupin. Okay. I'm willing to bet the real crown wasn't in there. Yeah. At all. That's, that is such a thing that they would do in this. Like, he knows. There you go, go get it. Oh, fool. <laughs> yep, this is just the kind of slapstick I come to expect. Don't worry about it. I bamboozled them. I play the ruse. Oh, here it comes. I know what... <laughs> I know it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna be like Lupin's face or something and it's gonna blow up. It's gonna be like a cake, maybe? I don't know. What could make that shape? Oh! It's a book. It's a lampshade, turned upside down. Is he the guy wanting to steal stuff? He seems a bit suspicious, but then again, crime stuff makes me suspect everyone. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Maybe it is the real one, then. Hmm. I love the amount of mystery that surrounds itself. You kind of have an idea of what could potentially be going on. Yeah. But then they constantly start twisting around through other possibilities, and then eventually, oftentimes, it just leads back to where you thought it was initially. That's why I think, like, the mystery genre will never really go out of fashion, because you always get a new story and whatnot. Exactly. Exactly. It's what makes these sort of things great. Even if you know what's going to happen, sometimes the greatest part of it is finding out what led to that conclusion to begin with. Well, I, I say mystery, more crime, really, but uh, yep, it was Rebecca. Oh, there it is, the triple twist we were expecting. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't have uh, doused yourself in wine? Don't booze on the job. Yep, that is the uh, lesson to be learned here. Not nice to run away about finishing your sentences. You don't <laughs> you don't really care about the crowd, but what? Oh the frill, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, that's gonna hurt. Oh Lupin. He's less stupid than I was led to believe through like pop culture osmosis. He's actually kind of he's kinda of great. Oh yeah, I mean he's goofy, but he ain't stupid. Not by a long shot. This guy knows what he's doing. We What the hell is this? Attack on Titan? <laughs> Might as well be at this point. I gotta say, it blends 3D animation as well pretty nicely. It usually sticks out like a sore form in uh, anime. Yeah, that was pretty seamless. I didn't really notice anything like that, to be honest. It may have been 3D. Maybe it was just 2D for my mind to comprehend. It might be that two and a half d thing that's going around, like with the whole Dragon Ball Fighters and Guilty Gear and what have you. Ah, very true. She took the crown. Oh no. Don't you do it. Whee! Bridezilla. Ah. <laughs> uh, no. Got denied a friggin' spiritual away a moment. Here we go. True, but, uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, we're still kind of falling here. Oh, it's that plane that they designed. That was quick. That went from, like, blueprint to actual finished product in, like, 
basically a day. Well, that's uh, these sorts of standalone episodes for you. Oh, it still hurt his arm a lot, but uh, I like the banter, so I'll leave it be. Oh, we're not done falling yet. <laughs> no, not quite yet. And here comes the tree trunk. <laughs> yep, called it. <laughs> there you go. Always bet on Fujiko. And the bag's empty. Oh, nice! <laughs> he stole the glasses. And the crown sort of suits it, I suppose. Yeah, and sort of like that weirdly, um... I don't know what the right descriptive term for it is, but... Yeah, I see what you mean. So, are you gonna get an annulment? No, I guess we're going to just leave it open-ended for now. Uh, I guess so. I think they're just doing it for the thrill of the hunt, so they'll just put it back, judging by what the butler was saying. Oh, Lupin, you incurable prankster, when will you learn? Wah-wah. Eh, it was all in good enjoyment in the end. (laughs) Does every episode end like this? I would be very surprised if it didn't. But you know what, he always gets out okay in the end. Oh, dramatic. And that's it, apparently. That's the end of uh, this uh, Lupin adventure. Thank you very much, POTK, for commissioning this. Uh, I enjoyed this a lot, actually. The animation's fantastic. Voice work is great. Like, plot's just good old crime fluff, but it does the job nicely. I mean, it just reminds me of why I love Castle of Cagliostro so much, and this just has it all and then some. Everything that I would expect from it and everything that I'm familiar with, plus a few extra nice bits here and there thanks to it being... More modernised, I guess. Yeah, this is actually really good fun. I'll probably end up watching more of this at some point. For sure, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that'll do it for now, guys. If you want your own Patreon TV com, have a look at our prices on our Patreon page. And uh, as for us, we'll be back next time for some more Patreon TV coms. Bye-bye.